Welcome back to Teton Technology. So just to touch on the risk assessment, that's the process of identifying, estimating, and prioritizing risk to an organization's operations. Things like their functions, their mission, their image. And that has to do also with the assets to individuals, and it can stretch as far as the nation's risk assessment. So first, there's vulnerability. So if you've ever done a vulnerability test, what you're doing is you're testing for any gaps or weaknesses in an organization's protection of its valuable assets, including and not limited to the information. Next is a threat. So that can be anything as a bug, that can be a person, that can be a group, that can be an entity, anything that needs protection from. So that can be insiders or insider trading where you know it's known. There's also outsiders. That's planned or opportunistic discovery of vulnerability hackers. If you need like business competitors or cyber criminals, critical entities, risk identification. So first you want to identify the risk to communicate it clearly. The employees are responsible for identifying risks. That's why there's things that you can take to have the entity in the organization itself internally have blocks as well. Again, I touched on Linux in the last video with sudo where you know, internal users can only have access to certain parts of the organization when it comes to data. Again, you want to identify risks to protect against it. Now let's talk about the level of risk. So this risk treatment is decision making about the best actions taken regarding identifying and prioritizing risk. There's risk avoidance, so you can do zero trust, where you can just eliminate risk entirely. Risk acceptance, where you realize that the risk or the threat is negligible, or the benefits offset the risk. So you see this obviously with gambling. Risk mitigation, taking actions to prevent or reduce the position of a risk event or its impact. Example: the remediation measures or controls, or security controls, policies, procedures, standards to minimize the first risk. Use risk transfers, where you can pass the risk to another. The last thing I want to touch on is the risk matrix. There's two types of risk analysis. The first is qualitative, it's a method for risk analysis based on the assignment of a scripter, such as low, medium, or high. And then there's quantitative, which is the method for risk analysis where numerical values are assigned to both impact and likelihood based on social probabilities and monetized valuation of loss or gain. And then risk tolerance is just the level of risk that you're willing to assume. So, for example, an organization builds a SID package to get a million dollar project. Or the trauma center needs local backup generators and redundant systems to safeguard against potential risks. Make sure to click that subscribe button.